welcome ladies and gentlemen and uh, this is professor khan and this week and actually for the next three weeks will be uh wiring life oil burners this is energy system lab two and this is the moment you've been waiting for for a long time where you can actually wire a live oil burner you've been building up your uh, skills from wiring one light bulb and doing pipe threading and uh, soldering etc oil stuff pump stuff to this point so where you can go and comfortably wire a live oil burner so we will do oil burners three times one time in a system where it's uh, used to heat hot water and the other time when a system with, with steam then forced hot air okay so by now you have been able to uh, wire a CAD control you did that already five times and I hope you're really comfortable with it if not please uh, review some of the videos the primary control which is the same as the CAD control but it could be also a stack mount relay uh, here you go stack mount relay an aquastat I think I meant to say aquastat here so aquastat and uh, primary so th these are all three are primaries we know how to wire two wire thermostat uh, step switches those are the position of the of the relays and the ready position that's for a stack mounted relay uh, thermal switches okay this is can be used as mechanical and uh, that's what they mean by the thermal switches also also there is are there are thermal switches that melt and fuse when there is a, a fire right we are familiar with pump operation motor operation ignition electrodes and uh, circuit protection right okay so what's what's next now we will be able to wire a hot water system a steam system and a warm air furnace so one week you will do i'm gonna have you divided into groups and so the first one some group will do hot water some group will do steam and that will do hot air and we'll keep switching until we finish uh, until you have wired and experienced each one of them so please take your time whenever you are with the system to know the components see how it's wired and uh, make sure it's uh, you get a grasp of what's uh, uh, what goes where and what is the function of each component of that system okay so we have several furnaces and boilers in the lab uh, I, I mean the second section of the lab there's at least uh, Two furnaces, three boil, uh, six boilers, two hot water, and I think four steams. And in the back section of the lab, we have 15 boilers. So we have plenty of boilers uh, and furnaces all over the shop, so we can work on them. And I would like to have you close to each other so I can monitor you for the first three weeks. Then I might be able to leave you alone in the back shop, in the back part, portion of the shop where you can go work alone and troubleshoot and again you have two and a half hours so please come prepared and try to utilize this time uh, effectively okay and um, all the equipment we have are oil burner and we have they have oil burners they're mostly oil there are there are some other equipment that are gas we're not going to work with those yet and uh, probably you'll do some of that in the principal refrigeration and you'll be able to do one lab here with gas as well uh, Honeywell or Beckett CAD control. So the control we have, the primary control, our Honeywell, so we have some Beckett's, uh, but they do the same functions and the wires are the same colors. Uh, we have few stack mount relay switches in the back portion of the shop, but you are familiar with those now and you've seen them work. The main oil circulation pump is in the back, so make sure it's turned on before you try to uh, turn on your boiler because again, the distance is really large. Uh, all the way from the back tank to the uh, where the boiler is and it's supposed to be gravity fit but that's why we have a circulation pump to put some pressure into the oil line so this is uh probably the first furnace you've seen just in the shop it's a uh, it is uh an olsen it's a hot air system if you notice here this first thing i'm going to do when i go to the lab is locate my controls uh, I have all these controls lined up in the same uh, next to the boiler. This boiler will plug. There's mostly a, a plug next to it. If not, you can get an extension cord for. I mean, if you are working with some, something else, and thermostat usually is very close to it. So the first thing you do is locate your uh, 
control new switches. Then look at your source of fuel and trace your fuel all the way to the source. Make sure none of those valves are closed. Okay. And so check the fuel, check the sources before you start the wire. Make sure all the components are there, all the wires are there, and this location of the primary is not okay. I don't like to be dangling. So we will take our time trying to rewire this thing and do it the right way. You will see here as well is the fan limit switch. Uh, also check out the vent. Make sure it's open. Trace that. Uh, and take your time. Please do not just rush into it. Um, and I will we'll try to keep close and ask me any questions if you need. Um, so before you start again you, uh, you, you make sure all the equipment you need is around you make sure the oil line is available and open and we can start by wiring using the schematic and we'll see if it works or not so this equipment usually they get used maybe twice or three times a year so uh, chances are sometimes it's clogged and sometimes they need some kind of encouragement <laughs> so we'll 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 think about that a little bit and see how it works. So this is a hot air furnace. So the air will be uh, pulled from this. This is the intake, and will go out from this area over here. And this is the inducer fan motor, and there's a fan inside in here. So this is one of the furnaces. It's an Olsen, and we have a in here. We have a boiler. It's a hot water system. Again, locate the component and see where it goes. And these systems actually are really cool because the heating system is upstairs of that little uh, mock house over there. So again, take, take your time. We have two and a half hours over three weeks. Uh, so hopefully by the end, you will be able to manage to like not be intimidated by the look of uh, an oil burner. Uh, another air furnace over there is the other side from the uh, mock house. And if you look here, there's an oil filter, just the oil line. This uh, system here is coupled with an AC. So there's an AC and there is also a furnace put in together. So this is a really good system to start to practice on. And we'll look at the board as we go along. And please, when you do the wiring make sure you leave the wires in good conditions and uh, uh, look at the boxes junction box you don't want to be uncovered and make sure all the equipment are in line uh, this is another steam boiler so we have two boilers here those are both steam we're gonna use both of these uh, to wire and again locate your thermostat locate all the controls uh, for example here this is our my pressure switch see what it looks like where is your gauge? Before you do anything, just look at the equipment and see what does it look like and what's happening. And uh, I will, again, divide into group and try to explain to you what where everything is. Please take notes and be attentive and uh, be ready to, to get busy wiring these uh, components. Okay? So I will assign you a furnace or a boiler. Uh, take out. It's a good procedure to take out the vent and smith, look in, inside the chamber. Make sure it's clean and there's no residual oil in there. That is very important. Look at your panel board and switches. You need three switches. Uh, look at your oil supply line. Check the venting system. Look at your power supply. Connect your CAD primary control to the burner. And then have me check the wire and we'll turn it on and see if it works or not. And if not, that will be great because we can do some troubleshooting. Okay. Uh, so things you have to check for, thermostat response, let's say it, it runs and it's nice and uh, everything's good. Let's check the thermostat response. If we shut off the thermostat, will it respond and shut off or not? That's one thing you have to check. Check for the flame presence response. What if we shut off the, shut off the oil and see if there's no flame and how would the system respond? Okay. Check for proper operation. Is it turning on as high and low limit? Is it, uh, is there any vibration is there any buzzes uh, and so on uh, check for smoke and check for the venting situation is it really venting to the, to the outside or not you can look and trace the smoke and also you can look outside and see the vent and where does it go this is uh, the schematic that you've seen already about basic wiring of a hot water system probably use that for when you wire the aquastat on the board this is something you didn't see yet this is the wiring of uh, of a furnace this is the Olsen furnace wiring. And if you look here, you'll see uh, neutral, 
coming all the way to again this is my primary control and this primary control is a three wire primary control so probably you're going to have something with four wires so in this case we have the orange and the blue going into uh coming from the orange so the orange will go to the transformer and all to the burner motor and to the emission transformer and the oil or the oil valve if we have one so o v okay and uh neutrals again they always get uh, hooked up together. So here we have a fan limit switch, which behaves kind of like an aquastat. It's a stack mounted relay, but it's not primary. There's a coil inside that goes into the top of the goes into the top of the furnace. I check the air temperature. If the air is cold, it's not going to turn on the fan. So there's a fan, and so. The hot wire goes into the air first. Then it is a blue wire that goes into the powering line on the control. So it's going to be either the black, if you have three wire uh, aquasta, I mean the primary control, and or this could be the red if you have a five wire primary control. So the power goes from the fan limit switch to the pr the primary control and to the to the motor. So hopefully. If you think about it, it makes sense because this is behaving like the aquastat and it should monitor the air temperature. And if the air is cold, it will turn on the primary. Once the air temperature is hot, it will turn on the uh, fan to, to circulate the air. Uh, the steam system is uh, very, very important and interesting. So there are two components we need, two controls we need for steam system, any steam system. Pressure control for high pressure and low water cutoff. Because if you run a steam system with no water, it will crack. And uh, if you exceed the pressure, the system will not function properly. So let's look at this. It looks a little bit messy. I made this schematic to make things a little bit easier. But uh, forgive how it looks kind of... Uh, basic but it does the job so the line voltage goes into the junction box here this is a wire nut in here and it will connect in series which is going it goes through the lower cutoff then into the second this is a wire nut by the way terminal and goes in series into the pressure control all the way back to the controlling power of the primary control so again as we said if this is five wire you're gonna have this going to the red, which is the limit switch, or if it's three wide, it, goes, it will go into the black. So you've noticed that uh, those controls will behave like an aquastat. The hot air uh, system will have the fan limit that behaves as a hot air system. And for the hot water, we have an aquastat. Okay, as I always say, I can talk about this, about these things forever, but until you do them, and you get to touch them and play with them it does not uh, make a lot of sense uh, so i'm very excited to see you wire these things please be please be careful and uh, take your time do not rush these labs i think it's very very important it's going to be very exciting three upcoming weeks okay so uh some questions um that you need to know before you go to the lab and again i put an assignment for each kind of connection you did if you did hot air there's an assignment for that so you go back on blackboard and do those uh, questions so how do you check for the draft door for function the draft door is what's uh, on the vent basically you push it with your finger it should swing open and close back again if there is no draft what is the oil line pressure coming into the oil burner it should be zero gauge it should be atmospheric pressure because it's coming as gravity should not be pressurized was there smoke when you in the uh in the fire chamber if you if you first turn it on and if so why probably this is residual gases or something from previous firing so was there smoke did the smoke go away and how did you deal with that how will you check if, the, if there is an oil flow in the in the oil line the best way to check for that is to purge and bleed the pump if you purge it and uh, this is the only way to check if there's an oil flow so uh, it's really difficult to know if the oil is going or not, but uh, opening the purge line 
with a small bucket you can tell that there is oil in the line or not if you increase the air intake what would happen to the flame the flame will increase and you will be burning lean so pay attention to that so this is a few questions and i put more questions on the blackboard for you to practice on and i will be adding videos from the lab for each one of those uh, connections okay have fun and uh, i'll see you soon bye